Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that after a bit, I'm back flight testing my F-35B test airframe. Uh, the reason that I say it's back and then also the reason that there's a handful of new colored parts on this are uh, I broke it uh, about a month ago. Um, nothing super dramatic, uh, not worth making a video about. Just uh, took off, had bad roll control for whatever reason, flipped over, uh, and had to fix some things. So, um, not a big deal. This was designed to be easy to repair, and I foresee it crashing a handful more times while I learn some new things about uh, flight controls and that sort of thing. Uh, but, anyways, got that all fixed up and, and ready to go again. Um, I didn't really find out what caused the roll control issues, but I thought maybe it was a desync between the roll control motors and their ESCs. Um, these are really high KV motors. They're uh, running at a pretty high voltage as well, so uh, I went in there to the BL Heli settings and, and made some changes to try to prevent that. So we'll see if it pops up again in the future. Um, otherwise, you will notice they are bigger roll thrusters. Uh, this isn't for more control authority, um, but the amount of thrust that I'm getting from the main fans is, is really marginal for hover. Uh, so going to a bigger propeller, getting some more thrust out of those roll motors, regardless of how much roll authority they're providing, is kind of a good way to, to compensate for being kind of marginal on the main fans. Um, so I imagine when I go to another airframe at some point with more powerful main fans, I can scale the roll thrusters back down and, and use them more for roll control and less for uh, thrust contribution. Um, other than that, you'll see a couple of other changes to the model. Um, the biggest difference is that the 3BSM has some new gearing. So if you take a look here, uh, these are new printed gears. They're much coarser than the old gears. Um, the reason for that was the brass servo gears that I had gotten to put on the servos for the pinions uh, are really convenient, but their pitch is really fine. And, and what that means is since the 3BSM can and flex a little bit under load. Uh, it's just thin plastic structures after all. Uh, that flex can be enough if the gears are really fine to, to cause the gears to be able to skip. Uh, and that's something that I found in testing, uh, especially when thrust is being produced and I'm trying to transition the nozzle back from uh, forward flight to vertical flight. The sections can kind of skip and slide around and, and probably wouldn't produce a very good result uh, if that happened in the air. Uh, so I printed these new gears. There's something like 20 pitch uh, relative to the 32 pitch of the brass gears. Uh, quite a bit coarser, a lot more contact area, uh, way less likely to, to skip when the duct deforms. And I'm really happy with that. Um, they're also kind of the double helical herringbone style gears. Uh, not for any particular reason, but uh, they look kind of cool and they help keep the sections in plane. Uh, what I did find out while I was doing this, which I thought was really cool, is that I can actually print pinion gears um, with fine enough detail on the servo spline that they'll properly engage the servo um, and really not need any extra work to, to keep them uh, from sliding around on the servo shaft. Uh, so they engage really nicely and, and they're really secure and I'm really happy with that. I was surprised that it's actually possible with just a regular off-the-shelf Prusa printer and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, the only things that I really did was I cranked the layer height down to 0.1 millimeters instead of the usual 0.2 and then I also reduced the extrusion width from 0.4 or 0.42 millimeters down to 0.2 millimeters which ended up working really nicely as you can see. Um, and in fact, I never even tried transitioning the 3BSM on the old brass gears because it was pretty clear that that was going to be uh, a problem even on the ground. Uh, however, I've got four flights now on this airframe with the new printed herringbone style gears. Uh, everything's working really well. Transitions are super smooth. Uh, there's no more of that, that yaw kick behavior, um, which probably is more of a function of the servos having more torque than the old gear motors. Uh, but it's still a welcome improvement. Uh, lastly, there's a pitot tube and the accompanying airspeed sensor now mounted on this. Um, 
The reason I did that, I may have mentioned it before, uh, RG Pilot, when it transitions, is entering into an airspeed wait state where it's tilted the nozzle a little bit and it's waiting for the vehicle to accelerate to a particular airspeed before it commits to the transition. And what happens there, if you don't have an airspeed sensor and you're using ground speed, uh, wind conditions can play a really big factor in how your transition occurs. So if you're flying into a headwind and the airspeed's there but the ground speed is really slow, uh, the aircraft's going to get stuck in that transition weight state. Uh, it's not going to know that it's actually gotten enough airspeed to complete the transition and you kind of end up awkwardly flying around with the multi-rotor motor still active. Uh, and I saw that a couple of times earlier in testing. So having this airspeed sensor on there is going to allow me to make the transition much more consistent because the airspeed uh, will be measured properly regardless of what the wind is doing. Uh, I'm still collecting data, I have to calibrate the sensor and that sort of thing, but I'm um, pretty optimistic that that's going to improve performance. Um, and also just being able to have extra consistency in the vehicle is really helpful for flight testing because now I can move from making sure all of the elements of the system work in general to testing specific things, making targeted improvements, and then adding enhancements uh, to the way the vehicle behaves. Uh, so you'll start to see some things like that uh, over the next few weeks here, hopefully, as I add some new flight modes for uh, assisted forward flight without pitch changes, which I'm really excited about. Uh, maybe some short takeoff type behavior that you see a lot of the times from the real F-35B. Uh, and then also some, some fun videos coming up uh, where I just kind of do cool things with this model. Anyways, here's some flight videos, both from the onboard camera and from some friends shooting from the ground that show the first few transition flights with both the new cam servos, the new gearing, and the new roll thrusters. Take a look. Sometimes they set their net up <laughs> all the way over there, but maybe because you guys are coming, they move over.
So pretty cool, as you can see. Uh, it's nice to have more consistent behavior from this airframe. Uh, the first few flights earlier in the, in the project went really well, but now I'm finally starting to see just really smooth, repeatable performance. And as I mentioned, that's really what's gonna let me transition from just validation to uh, developing some more features. Uh, the last couple of things that I'm looking at that you may have noticed from these flights are uh, there's a, a pitch up that's happening on the inbound transition uh, pretty consistently that I think has to do with the rate that the lift motor up front spools up in relation to the rate that the nozzle in the back is slewing. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that. Got got plenty of video and, and plenty of vlog data. Um, but otherwise I'm really happy with the way it's flying. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the more exciting videos that I've got planned coming up here and, and I think you guys will enjoy seeing those as well. Um, so keep an eye out for them, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.